We are solving absolute value equations. And yes, this is relatively easy. It's only difficult when you don't pay attention. And what I mean by that is not to me, but to the problems, okay? All right, so let's talk about what it means to be absolute value first. So if I have absolute value of 11, what is that? 11. 11, all right. What's the absolute value of negative 11? 11. 11. So that means two things inside of absolute value can produce the number 11, okay? So what happens is you're gonna have to do it twice. You're gonna have to do a positive version, right? So you can take absolute value of five minus two x, where the inside is positive 11, or the inside is negative 11. So these problems you're gonna solve twice. Yes, ma'am? I have a question. So how come these are like, they still become positive, but like on this sheet of paper that we did yesterday, we have, like, they switch. Okay, so when you're graphing them, you're looking at an input, right? Mm -hmm. And remember yesterday, we had problems like, so you had like f of x equals negative two, and that's outside of the absolute value, yeah. right? So if I have something like this, and then I have another negative out here, so most of that's gonna be negative because everything in an absolute value is positive, right? But it comes out and it meets a negative number. So that's why we had a bunch of negatives yesterday. Okay, so just because absolute value is usually associated with positive numbers, but if it comes out to meet negative numbers, then poof, it's all negative then. okay? Also, whenever you work things out in an absolute value, you have to work it all out with all the negative signs inside. It's only when you get to the final number you take the absolute value, right? So it c if I have like six minus five, I don't change that to six plus five. I do six minus five first, then get an answer, then take the absolute value, okay? Good question, all right? Any other questions before I move on? But this is relatively easy, but it, it's also very easy what to make a mistake if you're not paying attention if, to the equation. Go ahead. What if it's like M or like M or like B or X inside absolute value equals positive three? What do you put? M is I'm about to answer that, yeah. all right? So here, let's look at example 1A. I'm going to zoom in some and then refocus and partridge in a pear tree. All right. Okay. So what you're going to do is write it twice. You're going to do x minus 5 equals 8 and then x minus 5 equals negative 8. So that's the two possible things that could be inside. And then you just solve it like normal. Add 5, add 5, x is 13. Add 5, add 5, x is negative 3. And that's it. That's the two answers. One. Oh. One's negative and one's positive. Right. There is a positive version of the equation and there's a negative version of the equation. Can you have two positive answers? Two positive you could answers. have two positive answers. You could have two negative answers. Can it okay. equal zero? It could equal zero. All right. Now. What I'm about to do next, you do not have to copy or do in the problems. I am doing this to make a point, okay? Because sometimes we forget what we're doing. Like, why do we solve anything? Okay, because math is the search for truth. We're looking for numbers that will make this a true statement. So let's plug that in. So it's the absolute value of 13 minus five. The question is, is that equal to eight? Well, what's 13 minus five? Eight. eight. Is the absolute value of eight, eight? No. Yeah, that's it. So that's why that works. Let's plug in negative three into that expression. Absolute value of negative three minus five. Is that equal to eight? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, negative three minus five is negative eight. And the absolute value of negative eight is positive eight. Okay? So you do, I am not requiring you to go through this process, but this is, I do this to make a point. The numbers we get make the original equation true. The numbers we get, the solutions we get, make the original equation true. Right, my Asia? You guess? That is not adequate. All right. Example B. Example B. Now, in example B, notice you have absolute value, and then you have this negative 9 being added to it. You have to isolate the absolute value first. So I'm going to get rid of the negative 9. To get rid of negative nine, I just add nine. So that gives me absolute value of x minus nine 
equals 14. Now you do that two-step process, rewrite it with a positive version, and rewrite it with a negative version. And then you solve them separately. Okay, uh, no. Okay, uh, the reason is you can't take the absolute value until you actually work that out. Since you, okay. since you don't know what x is, you can't work out the x minus 9. And there are no math rules that makes parts of an equation change signs. And if you only change the 9 to positive, then what happened to the x? What do you do with the x? Okay. So you can't change parts of something without changing the whole thing. What if you get like x is equal to negative 5 and x is equal to positive 5? Can you do x is equal to positive negative 5? Mm -hmm. Alright, ready for C? Wait, how did, where did the negative 9 and like the one where you got x equals negative 5, where did the 9 outside of the absolute value come? Like, this 9? Yeah. I added 9 to both sides, and that's where the 14 comes from. But how did you like... Okay. Okay. How did you get negative 14? How to get what? Negative 14. Like okay, so I rewrote the absolute value, the positive version, and the negative version. So that's, that's the absolute value step, where you have to write two versions of that same thing. So you would just automatically... Automatically. All right? And you're going to see me do that every time unless there's no solution. All right, let's look at C. All right, so there are two numbers i got to get rid of. There's a minus 90 out here and a negative 80. You always get rid of whatever is being added or subtracted first. So I'm adding 90 to both sides. Somebody's working ahead, and he's going to miss several problems in a row because he doesn't know when to put no solution. Ooh, Andy. Six to seven. All right, now, look at here. I still need to get rid of this negative eight. This is negative eight times absolute value. So to get rid of this negative eight, I divide by negative eight. Why do you divide? What? Negative eight because this is negative eight times absolute value. Oh. To get rid of something that's being multiplied, you divide by. Now here's the next question. I have absolute value equal to a negative number. Is that possible? No. no. This is no solution. So when you have the absolute value by itself equal to a negative number, it is no solution. So this is what I mean by pay attention to the problem. Because it's very easy to just go, oh, negative 5 plus x equals 11, negative 5 plus x equals negative Wait, 11. Wait, so it's only, it's only no solution if it equals negative. Absolute value equal negative, right. <laughs> what if it equals positive? Then you do it. Oh, then you solve it. Then you solve it. All right, so if it's a positive number, you just work it like normal. If it's zero, you only have to do it once. Yes? What? What the five positive? Okay, what? So like, so like, what is like the five was like? This five? Positive five. Then it's a positive five. So if it's inside, no, it doesn't matter. If it's inside, it doesn't matter. If it's outside, out here, by itself, then it matters. So you have an absolute value equal to a negative number. That's no solution. If it inside is positive, negative, square, it doesn't matter. Okay, inside absolute value, doesn't matter. It's outside by itself, away from the absolute value. If that's negative, then it's no solution. All right, let's look at D. There are several no solutions in the homework, by the way. All right, so it looks like a lot of problems, but a bunch of them are no work. You just put no solution. All right, look at D. So you want to get rid of this 9 first. So I'm going to multiply by 9. So that's going to give me absolute value of 10x plus 4 equals 45. So I have absolute value equal to a positive number. That means you're going to rewrite it twice. 10x plus 4 equals 45. And then 10x plus 4 equals negative 45. So 
Can you multiply the 9 and the 5? Yes. And then solve each one separately. Subtract 4, subtract 4. I get 10x equals 41. Can I give a decimal answer? Yes. So divide by 10, and I get 4.1. Would you rather get a decimal or a fraction? Yes. Okay. I don't care. Yeah. Right. So if he gave me 41 tenths, that's too many tenths. Subtract 4. I forgot I was recording this. All right. 10x equals negative 49. Divide by 10. You get x equals negative 4.9. If you have negative 49 tenths, that's okay. Nobody got the joke. What was it? I'm not repeating it. It's, not, it's, gonna, really not, funny. it's not gonna be that funny anymore. Well, it wasn't funny to begin with. Oh, okay. It was like an old man joke. joke. It was okay. What? It was okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready for E? Yeah. He's on drugs. E. He got a speed recorded. <laughs> All right, so you got to add two to both sides. So that's 80. What do I do now? Add the two to, uh, I never heard of that. You got to get rid of this thing. Divide by four. All right, so that gives you 20. All right, now you do the rewrite. Positive 20, negative 20. How do I solve this? Well, what's the first step? Plus 2. So this is going to be an unfriendly fraction. This is not even a nice decimal. Wait, so... So if there's like seven out in out parentheses and then x and then like five, do you like out of parentheses? X is the only thing in parentheses. Do you and then the other side is like sixty or seventy. What do you do? Do you divide by that seven? You divide by the seven, then subtract, then turn it negative or positive. Where's the absolute value? All you said was parentheses. Where's the absolute value? I mean, absolute value, the x is in the absolute Well, then divide by 7, and then do the rewrite. Divide by 7 and subtract by 3? Is minus 3 outside the absolute value, too? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. So you get rid of the 3 first, so you add 3 first. Then divide by 7. Oh, okay. I'm hoping you guys had this finished. Yeah, and you weren't waiting for me to write it down. It's, um, it's, uh, it's positive. Oh, positive. Sorry. All right. Ready? Last example. Last example. So, it, but it's about the same now. These are all about the same. It's nothing special about these. <laughs> this is just a longer problem, right? So, what? Do you know what to get rid of first here? What do I get rid of first? No oh, solution. Uh, you add like Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So Andy fell into one of my traps. Because there is a negative number here. He said, oh, it's no solution. But I've oh, got too much stuff by over by here. Negative two, ten. I have to subtract the 8 first. So that gives me negative 10 times negative 5x minus 2 equals negative 30. So why don't you just go... Uh, like, uh, add the like turns eight. That 10 is being multiplied. Order of operation says you have to do multiplication before subtraction. And since you can't do that subtraction, you have to just get rid of the 8. Because uh, when I started, I did 8 minus 10 and I divided it. Right, you can't do that. So when I divide by negative 10 now, I get a positive 3 on the right. 
Now I do the rewrite. So it's negative 5x minus 2 equals 3, and negative 5x minus 2 equals negative 3. Add 2, add 2. Negative 5x equals 5. x equals negative 1. Add 2, add 2. What is that? Negative 1, so x is 1 fifth. We're doing the back later. Oh, tomorrow is makeup day. If you have stuff you need to make up, tomorrow's the day. <laughs>